absorb those things or light them. And so, uh, and then to your question, David, yes, I see the pressure. I think the committee has to hang tough and, and try and uh, uh, limit as much. Now, I also have, I'm on record as, uh, as I will come forward with some kind of a transfer tax, and that costs money as well. So I have to wait to see the first three. Did you bring it forward? I will bring it forward in the next few weeks, yeah, whether it's passed or not. Mr. Budget Chair, uh, the mayor yes. suggested that uh, in the last two months, certainly in the last week, the pressure has been off the city charter. Has been I wouldn't miss the city manager. That, is that in the last week there's been a big change, you know, the grading train has okay, come we'll, back. You're the chair of the budget committee. Have you changed your expectations of staff in the last week? Has I have been no, change? I have. My opinion has not changed uh, right from the get-go. Has your direction from staff to staff changed? No. Is there a belief among staff that they don't have to adhere to that? Or that the, the, the reins are loose? I think staff uh, put forward a, uh, a budget that they believe is, is sustainable, that it's defendable. And uh, I, I have no reason to believe that uh, we should deviate from the recommendation at this point. Did, how long ago, I mean, this budget, you've been in discussions all through the summer working on this. When were these decisions made about the recommendation for the tax increase? When did you get down to the final points of this budget? I never saw the real fine points until probably the last week or so when I realized that the things weren't going to get any better. I mean, we're always trying to sort of induce more and more savings, more and more efficiency. But I think the thing where it comes a point in time where you know, continually try to, trying to feed off savings just doesn't do the trick anymore. And uh, so it became evident. Mind you, once we did the 0.5 increase on the subway back in July, I knew then that you couldn't absorb the 0.5 within the 1.75. I mean, I would look at trying to absorb it, but I knew that it was. So you're saying the writing was on the wall? For me, it was. For me, it was. But uh, did the city manager, though, at any point assure you, wait, the mayor came to the city manager, assure him that you could both print the land transfer tax and absorb the subway tax in 1.75? Did you ever assure him that? No, assurances are given this way. We will do our best to try and achieve those results. I mean, that doesn't mean 100% assurance. It means we will continue to pound away and, and, and see what we can do. But at the end of the day, all you can do is try and do the best you can. You can't, you know, get blood, uh, get blood from a stone. We've got contracts that have to be honored. We've got union contracts. And whatnot. when you hear that departments are absorbing inflationary increases, by cutting back, not filling vacancies. I mean, there's only, you can only do that for so long. <laughs> well, you know, this, this budget has two components. One I said before, we're looking at continuing, a continuous look at the at cost savings, but the more important element is that you have to establish what we consider a rate of growth. And the rate of growth is, you can only finance growth with typically capital expenditures and some debt. And so once you define the rate of growth that you want, in other words, if you want to promote prosperity for the city, you don't get it by continually focusing on cost savings. And so if we do want to move forward and not tread water, we want to sort of swim on, then you need to invest in the future. And that part of the, of the uh, budget is part of the budget that unfortunately the mayor is not so, Councillor, should the City of Toronto tax rates be more in line with the 905? Well, I think, uh, yes, <laughs> the short answer to that question is yes. That's one of the reasons our tax policy has attempted to shift the, uh, the tax burden away from business onto the residential. Part of that reason is because to try and acknowledge that, in fact, the residential rate in the City of Toronto is well below the residential rates in, in other municipalities. We would have no money problems at all if they were even close. Well, if, if we could persuade the residents of Toronto to... Uh, to absorb some additional tax increases. But you know what, who likes taxes? Doesn't matter what municipality you live in, as soon as you mention three, four percent tax increase, people react. So is, is, this the gravy, is this the gravy train back? Is your budget the gravy train coming back? I certainly don't think so. Councillor, 